KW Judas, Free Radio Provo. We have Savinity joining us here on this beautiful, fine evening. It's a fine, beautiful evening here in Gumption, Utah. And you, yourself, you came from... Denver, Colorado. Denver, Colorado. <clears throat> Indeed. And how long have you been on the road? Um, around a month. Yeah. And didn't you say something about a little bit of hitchhiking... Yeah. Throughout your tour. Yeah. Um, we hitched for uh, twelve. We hitched for twelve hundred miles. There we go. Um, for a couple weeks um, down through New Mexico and into Arizona, and then back to Denver to get the car. I didn't have a whole lot of time or energy for music. Um, spending all my energy trying to get places. So it was, uh, <laughs> and it was like a hundred degrees. So. So how long were you doing that for? Two weeks. Yep. Damn. How mm-hmm. many shows did you play within that space of oh, time? Oh, not a lot. Just I maybe a little busking. I didn't do a whole lot. Uh, busking's always fun, though. Yeah. I mean, even if you're doing it somewhere you're not supposed to, what's the worst they can do? Yeah. Uh, Tell you to bugger off a little bit. Yeah. Santa Fe was like that. They told you to bugger off? Y- yeah. Is that what well, you said? Bugger? Y- yeah. Bugger off? Yeah, you got to... Man, I don't know how many times I get told to bugger off, even when I'm not busking. Yeah. It's outrageous. So they told you to bugger off in Santa Fe. Uh, no, somebody else warned me before it happened. Um, you, need to, no. you need to pay for a license there. There's a lot of places like that, so I understand. I've never really tried it myself. What you got to do is go down to the Vegas Strip. People will just pay you to take a picture with you. I mean, if you're like I'll dressed like Gene Simmons or something. And you're wearing roller skates, and you've got, like, a machete. It's true. <laughs> <laughs> he doesn't know what to say to that. Nope. Um, no, I just recommend trying it. You're going to have a lot of people asking you for photos, and, um, yeah, they'll pay you for it. I've done it, like, three times. <laughs> So what you got to do is learn how to juggle cantaloupes while you're on the Vegas Strip, too. That'll get you a lot of a lot of attention. Anyways. Or cabbages. A lot of peanut shells, actually. So all, as we all know, we're all kind of just in it for the peanut shells. It's true. So anyways, how long have you been playing music? Um, I guess like 15 years. 15 yeah. years? Mm-hmm. Have you been in, in any other bands? Yeah. Um, different like punk and hardcore bands, and um, that yeah, that's pretty much it. But mostly Michigan based. Day in day out was like a Michigan based. Yeah, but you're from Denver. I live in Denver the last five years. I moved, oh, moved right, to Denver right, 2012. Right. So you started out in Michigan. Mm-hmm. And you started out from a sperm and an egg. <laughs> yeah, beautiful. Yeah. What were uh, I mean? Anybody do? Do anything now, or what were your um, projects? Day in Day Out was a band from Mount Pleasant, Michigan. Um, it was like a punk. I don't know what the what to call it. You know, like what do you well, categorize things as? It sounds um, it, like a. It punk was fast and melodic and fast, intense. Melodic, intense. Yeah. Band name. Yeah. So. <laughs> Are you in any current band? No, just me and this uh, this little guitar. That's all I do. Hell yeah. So. so what made you just decide, you know what? F it. <laughs> I'm going to go off. Did you just edit yourself? I, I did. I can't believe I did that. Uh, you should pat I, yourself I, on I the back. I'm proud of you. I thought for a second and was like, man, before I, every show, I tell I'm people proud of you. Not, to, not to cuss, and I'm always the one that's doing it. <laughs> so, yeah, I, I will. I'll jerk myself off. Give myself a Good job. there on the back. <laughs> so, speaking of F words, you said that on the way here you play hippie F word music. That didn't really sound very hippie F word. It was pretty cool. I like the whistling. Yeah. I, I guess the hippie beer dried F-words out my whistle whistling. a little bit. I couldn't actually whistle. I, I missed some notes there. I was pretty embarrassed. Oh. This morning it sounded great. And then well, I damn. I thought it was Sucked down a few cool. beers and I can't. Now it's too dry. I can't do it. <laughs> uh, Don't blame it on the alcohol. You know. I've yeah. been drinking all day and I can whistle you, just fine. Yeah. You need to whistle those parts for me. I can't do it myself. I don't know the parts. 
I'll learn them, though. Good. If we would have gone over this before the show, I mean, ladies and gentlemen, I have actually had the opportunity of hanging out with this guy and his girlfriend um, our last day or so. We even went camping and fishing. It was a great experience. So I can say, even before the show started, these guys are pretty f- effing <laughs> cool. <laughs> And just to let you all know, put up with my ass for that long. If if you guys already spent a whole night with me and you're still here, then goddamn, wow, that's that's a lot. A cat, sorry, wizard. A a catfish and a brown trout later. Oh yeah, that was awesome, wasn't it? Yep. Got us a big old channel catfish and my first trout of the year. It's June and that was my first trout of the year, man. That was a good one. That was good. Sorry, what were you gonna say, wizard? Oh, that. no fish were punched in the making of this show. <laughs> uh, don't make me spit up my beer with it. Now that's it. That's going to be an ongoing joke now. Just because of that that last show with Jefferson Jefferson and Taya. <laughs> yeah, uh, I got bad. way too much shit for that one. Let us never speak of that again. Even though I know it's probably going to get brought up in the next... Well, probably half hour or so. All I did was talked about, talked about punching a fish. There's no proof or evidence that I ever actually did. So, let's have another song, shall we? Cool. Yep, I'm going to do a couple uh, back-to-back. These songs kind of match That's each good, yeah. So. Not a problem. We have Savenity on KW Judas, free radio provo, and thank you all for listening.
your gentle rain to a drought stricken. That was pretty cool. Thank you, brother. <laughs> Sorry, I mean, that was Savenity here on KW Judas Free Radio Provo. Provo, Provo. Um, what was that about? Just curiosity. Um, that last song's about death. Um, oh, yeah. One of our favorite subjects here on yeah. KW Judas. That, Go, um, please so indulge. I took a Buddhist Buddhism class when I was in college, and there was a there was like this parable about a wave, and the wave is supposed to be a person, you know, and it's like crashing toward the shore, and it's going to die, it's going to dissolve into nothing on the shore, and it's freaking out, and then there's a wave behind it, it's like, hey, you know, like you're in the ocean, don't worry about it. So yeah. And I was like, well, that's kind of cool. That's kind of a cool way to look at it, you know? So I wrote a song about it. That does kind of make sense. <laughs> it does, doesn't it? Kind of. I mean, kind of. We're not waves. We're human well, beings. But. I mean, any sort of parable only kind of makes sense. That's true. It's just a creative way to think about death, I guess. I like it, though. Yeah. Um, so I guess we kind of warned you. We do talk about death a little bit. A little bit there <laughs> on KW Judas. And since we're on the topic, um, we have had a lot of stories about some crazy shit people have, I guess, witnessed while they're on tour. We had a guy, actually, your style sort of kind of reminds me of him, that uh, depicted a story of some people who lit themselves on fire at a gas station. And it does get brought up more than once because it's kind of a remarkable story. And watching them burn to death. I've actually watched someone burn to death. And it's kind of weird. It's kind of weird. Was it intentional? So, I mean, like I guess... Se- like self-immolation? Was it intentional? 
Which one? Like uh, the s- story of the. That one you kn- you couldn't have really said, <laughs> and I guess the one that I witnessed you couldn't have really said either. Um, they just kind of jumped into a big bonfire out wow. uh, out in the desert. It was pretty. Well, it maybe was pretty crazy. Substance related, maybe. Possibly. Yeah. It was speculated. Of course, any time that some, somebody does something like that, unless the first question most people ask is... Unless it's a Buddhist monk in Vietnam. Yeah, like, yeah. They want to know what were they on. What mm-hmm. would just make somebody do something that crazy and bizarre? Mm-hmm. Well, I actually was close friends with a good chum who did it himself. And what made him do it? Life's a bitch. Oh, that, that was it. That was pretty much it. Cool. I thought at least somebody might laugh, but not even a cricket. No. Anyways. You're hanging out so with a bunch of Buddhists. The question is, Sorry. I don't know. <laughs> I don't hate. Uh, I don't want to pry. Have you any of those sort of a tale? Um, not yes. I mean, I've lost a lot of people close to me as far as death goes. Right. Um, you know, uh, my uncle that raised me. Um, my both my sisters, uh, best friend. So I've lost quite a few people. Um, but yeah, I don't know. You gotta. Get, you don't take life as for granted as much. I think I True. generally treat people better. Be, you know, having lost people that I love. So. And every time you lose someone, it kind of makes you look at life a little differently. I mean, every time. Absolutely. Because every time it's different. I've been through many myself, but who wants to be such a buzzkill on such a joyous occasion as Savinity on KW Judas Free Radio Provo? Yeah! Ha. So, why don't you sing another really fucking depressing song? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm all about to. I will. I'd love to. Yeah, I, I'd love to hear it. <laughs> <laughs> so I really wasn't kidding at all. But I'm going to drink this beer while you do it, if you don't mind. Would you like a beer? Anyone? I would love a beer. All right, then. We're drinking beers here with Savenity on KW Judas Free Radio Provo. And yes, it's Gumption Beer. 3.2 Utah Gumption Ugh. High Life. Anyone else? I have one. I'll pass it along. And make sure that we shred these beer tabs because you don't want to kill the little baby seals or the seagulls or the um, amphiumen. Is that what they are? A, a two-toed amphiumen. Or Wizard, you know fish. about those. You know, the, the big long eel things that are actually an, an amphibian. I hear they got a mean bite. Sorry, Fishies. I'm getting distracted. So, what's the name of this? tune you got here for us this one's called harbor for your courage it's a song written by one of my best friends um in denver he wrote it um well it's basically to anybody that's you know venturing out like making drastic changes in their life and you know heading into uncertain waters where there's not as much security um to make a better life uh in whatever way that means for you. But it's called Harbor for Your Courage. Severity on KW Judas, Free Radio Provo. Thank you all for listening.
<laughs> Savanity on KW Judas Free Radio Provo. Sorry, I had a little tadpole stuck in my f- f- my throat. Tadpole. He's still there. <laughs> it's not a frog. It's the underdeveloped zygote of a frog. Frog balls. I guess you wouldn't call it. A- hey, we already talked about that, dude. You know that that's not real. Yeah. Well, gotta prove it. You can't you prove know. something's not real. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody knows that. You can prove something's real, but you can't <laughs> prove something's not real. Ask Sasquatch. Or God. <laughs> yes, I did just compare God to Sasquatch. Because <laughs> you can't fucking prove either of them exist. And that's how we roll here on KW Judas, folks. There might be a god, there might be a Sasquatch, but until you can prove the size of the schlong of the elusive Judas. Sasquatch. What? You realize you just solved the puzzle. Huh? Sa- what? Sas- Sasquatch is god. Oh, shit. <laughs> and there's a reason they call you the wizard. I mean, there's a couple reasons, but that was one of them. <laughs> I do appreciate. That was your, your fact of the day. <laughs> <laughs> My useless fact of the day. Wizard usually has a useless fact for every show, and that was the most useful useless fact you've provided, I'd Good. have to say. Could I can't service. remember what it was. What was it? Sasquatch is God. Oh, yeah. Totally. Yeah, I, I can go with that. I can buy that. I think I can finally actually accept religion now. It kind of makes sense. I always used to think maybe Cain was Sasquatch. Oh, no, no, no. Back when I was a, mo- a young Mormon boy, that's mowing, what they teach the Mormons. More mowing the lawn. <laughs> I, lo- I love Utah. Yeah, how many times have you been here? This is the only time that counts. I love Utah. The only time that counts. Yeah. So you've pretty much just driven through. Mm. Right. That's kind of how I feel about... Hmm. Colorado? Oh, no. I think I told you how Colorado, when we went, it was just the same sort of like desert terrain that we usually have here in Utah. Because I didn't actually make it into any real specific town. Was it Grand Junction? No, it wasn't even a... It was... I, I mean... BFE. There was these hippie f words, as you so <laughs> properly coined the term. Coined, yeah, <laughs> right. right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> damned hippie f words um, that had some property out there, and we were helping them do an event. It was actually pretty fun. Nice. The f- the second time we went out there, it wasn't as fun because the weather just blew a chode. But you know how blowing chodes go. I mean, shit. It's unpredictable. It's not always fun, dude. It's unpredictable. You know, blowing a chode. Uh, if I was the weather, fuck, I'd have blown a chode that day. That whole weekend, Yeah, I would have blown chode. So I can't really blame the weather. You know, if chodes were getting blown more often in Colorado, maybe there wouldn't be so many forest fires. Well, I can only... Imagine, because we were out still in the middle of the desert. It wasn't even really like desert, desert. It was just sagebrush and dead weeds, just like it is in most of Utah if you just drive like a little way out of here. <clears throat> See, Gumption is surrounded by absolute nothing. They could hide an Area 51 in Gumption's backyard, and nobody would even know the difference. I mean, I swear, Skinwalker Ranch is like r- a coin's toss away. Anyways, skinwalker, that's that Navajo term, right? We yeah. probably don't want to really indulge in that whole thing on the air because we don't want our entire station to be cursed. That's a good point. It already is. I mean, <laughs> just saying, we don't want to make things worse, do we? You know, draw as much negative attention as we possibly can to our humble little studio here in Gumption, Utah. But, oh shit, did you hear that? Yeah, we should probably play another song, dude. Okay, this is a new one? Yeah, let, let's, ha- let's have another song. This one's called Pour It Out. In your right. mouth. 
what's it, what's it called? <laughs> Savannah on KW Judas free radio problem. Thank you all for joining. my face I found my place where I'm no longer in conflict with peace too long it's been living on someone else's clock serving a master apart from my very own connection to the force that beats my heart no longer swimming How much do we really need? I don't need anything but a little bread and a jacket when it's cold. The love of my people sheltering. From the storms created by the separation from each other It's all boiled down to this I can finally see it now The gift flows forth from hands unclutched The controller takes a bow Pour it out Give it away Circulate what we're afraid of program is strong, the concrete is thick, but the exhaustion is setting in. KW Judas, Free Radio Bravo. We have Savinity here joining us on this blind pheasant evening. Fe- pleasant evening. And I was kind of wondering, you said that you just, where did you get the name Savinity? Uh, it came from a dream uh, like yeah, that eight years ago. It was um, something that we mentioned and I wanted to save for tonight. 
Sense. So Savanity, he was just this, be this being. Um, his name was Brian Savanity, and um, it was more of an it almost. Like I didn't know, but it was like a like a it was almost like an angel sort of thing. But I, we didn't say anything. How to did each you other. know his name? He told. I, I guess it was like telepathic. I don't. I think it just like I just knew it. Like I he I don't remember him just saying there. it to me. I just remember knowing it. Crazy. And um, it was just like a completely fearless, loving presence. Um, so it wasn't a negative entity. Oh my god! It was an f- incredibly positive entity. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. And then so and then I looked up the name Savanity. I was like, oh, that sounds kind of sounds like like Haggerty or like another Irish name. You know. So you when but you it's not it up, like it doesn't exist. Like it's, it's not not a, a word. It's not a word. Curious. Yeah. So it's like sur- curious, are and curious. Are. Curious, are we? <laughs> Indeed. Um, so how long ago was that? Eight years ago. Really? How old were you? Uh, well, I'm 32 now, so I guess I was 24. Huh. Yeah. Were you on anything? No. Just a nor- <laughs> maybe, maybe. Again, that maybe a, that uh, always got to be the question. <laughs> well, you know, maybe. I think it was one of the nights when I wasn't on anything. I was probably just oh. full of... Uh, you know, cookies and milk, and just just a normal ass night, school night. I was in college, so um, yeah. Was, who knows? So, what happened in the dream? Um, so, very little. Um, he was standing. So, I was in the. I had lived in this apartment next to the railroad tracks um, in Mount Pleasant, Michigan, and there was this bridge that was full of graffiti and everybody called it the heroin bridge. And that was in real life, not in the dream. Yes, this is in real life. Okay. But this is where he was in the dream. Right. So there's this, their heroin bridge is like got a bunch of broken bottles on it and it's just kids go there and drink and do graffiti and stuff and right. whatever. It's outside my apartment. Um, so he was standing on the bridge in the dream, just sort of radiating still in that, like on the bridge and I was standing off the bridge like looking at him. Huh. Um, and then... After that, he introduced himself, not verbally, I don't remember talking to him, just knowing his name, and then hopping a freight train off of the bridge. We hopped a freight train, and we were like kind of dangling our legs off the back of a freight train. The um, two of you. Yes. Him and in Savanity mm-hmm. and yourself. Yeah. And you've only seen this guy once? Yes. That is pretty cool. Yeah. Where... Uh, this was what state? Michigan. Michigan? Yeah. How old would you say this guy seemed to be? Ageless. Just kind of... Yeah. He didn't infinitely y- to be an old man or a youthful... He was infinitely sorcerer. young, infinitely old. Huh. Just yeah. kind of a being. Yep. I'd that is actually... Uh, th- I do take a lot of interest in that story and other stories that I've heard like that. You know, I've had... Um, I've heard a lot of just things uh, where... People could swear they were introduced to people who, or beings. I can't say people. Entities that craft your dreams. The ones who are kind of behind the framework. Wow. If that makes sense. It does. And I don't know how much to read into it. I haven't read into it. Yeah. It's extremely interesting. And I've always taken quite the fascination towards dream state and um, just how... The subconscious mind is, if it's manifesting that preemptively or if certain things, because, I mean, we all know, well, people who at least remember their dreams know that there's been, you you have to admit, there's been times that you dreamt of something and it happened. Yeah. Has that not happened to you? Well, th- that hasn't happened to me, but my dreams have guided my life a lot. Yeah, I've big life decisions have been definitely had dreams. what you would almost call prophetic dreams. Definitely, you know, wizard. Yeah, it's it's not it's not often, but I've had them. It's been years, but used more frequently as a kid. I would dream shit before it happened. Wow, really my co- my cousins were like that too, but I never had that experience. We got in a terrible car accident when we were kids, and my cousin Brian and cousin Lauren both dreamt it the night before it happened. Yeah, and that was really bizarre. Yeah. yeah, I've definitely heard of stuff like that, and I've. Kind of had occasions myself. Um, Gives me goosebumps. But you, you have to wonder: it's, is it a manifestation of the future, 
or is it your subconscious mind almost projecting something and that energy almost caused it to happen? Does that make any sense? It does. Um, or your belief in that? Because the mind is a terribly powerful thing. It is, but I would hope More so that beyond our, most people's realization. It's true. I would hope in our infantile state of evolution that we aren't that powerful. Yeah, you would hope so. But there are too many times where you know, you'd almost question which, which was it. Or is it just coincidence? Yeah. Total coincidence. It's easy to just say it's coincidence because, kind of like we were saying, you can't really prove it. can't really prove something doesn't exist. You can't pr- really prove that wrong. Yep. Any of those theories. But you can't prove them right either. Yeah. <laughs> uh, another kind of uh, thing I've always postulated is deja vu. You know what I mean? How yeah. a lot of times you swear to God you've, you've been there before or you've seen it before or you've seen this happen. You know the exact next words that whoever it is in that room is about to say. And where does that come from? I've had dreams that are the same way. Where I swear I was having deja vu in my dream. And that's another just kind of thing that kind of leaves a lot of questions, of course. Yeah. Um, that's fascinating. Alan, where, Alan Watts, his explanation of what deja vu is, is probably my favorite. What's that? He talks about time as like an ocean. It's not linear. Right. Um, and so when we have deja vu, we sent something is about to happen before it happens. He he basically says that it's like the ripples of like a, a, say a pebble dropping on an ocean. And then like it's basically like the feeling and the the little ripples before you get to the center point. You know, it's like almost just like like seeing like time is like this ever present thing. It's not it's in it, it's um eternal. The present moment is eternal and like it's not linear. Um, I can't really describe it that well, but Alan, that's Alan Watts' idea, and I really like that a lot. Yeah, that is pretty cool. Yeah. I mean, deja vu, especially, this is kind of this phenomenon I've always kind of been interested in, and I don't know how I've managed to link it to dream states. But I've never heard of that. It 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 kind of does make sense. Like, if you just dreamt this, that's where you would recognize it from. You know, That's and I have had times that I've, of course, have reoccurring dreams that are in the same location that I've never been in real life. You know what I'm saying? And I'm with people that I've never met in real life, but they're very familiar in the dream. Yeah. You know, I don't know their name. I could never retain their name when I'm awake, when I'm here. But unlike a lot of people, I'm pretty involved <laughs> in the dream state and I'm almost convinced that you're kind of living two separate lives a lot of times but we have kind of indulged in this subject for a moment oh god this sh- we've only got like 13 minutes left folks sorry we do tend to get distracted here on KW Judas when we get into an interesting topic it's been fun it is and I mean you did say that you weren't sure if you'd have enough material to cover oh. an hour, so <laughs> I, that's good. I warned you we're we're gonna have to bullshit a little bit. I've got plenty, so I'm gonna cut down to two more songs. Okay, I'm actually just receiving the Derpensley commercial on email, so I'll get cool. that queued up here in just a second. Cool. And yeah, we are with you live on KW Judas Free Radio Provo with Savenity. Thank you all for listening. How long's the commercial? My tuner died. All this speaking of death, we've experienced the death of a tuner on this tragic evening of K.W. Judas. The tuner is dead, folks. So, so.
sorry. Oh, go ahead. All right, are you tuned? Yeah, I'm tuned. All right, we're good. Can it be Judas? Savenity on Free Radio Provo. <laughs> Now the warriors 
kid? Where'd you get that swell necktie? Oh, well, not from Derpishly, of course. They just sell you some kind of self, uh, self-activated self bedwetting necktie or a necktie that falls apart in your hands, puts itself back together and it has a self-wetting necktie or a bedwetting railroad spike or a toboggan. Ha! No toboggans here. Derpenschley's just bringing it back old school. Derpenschley's got the new vintage Cuban necktie. Uh, hey, hey, no, no. Oh, 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 no, oh, no, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. <laughs> no. no. Hold on still. <laughs> just cut there. One incision there. A few little... <laughs> So, there, pull the tongue out, and shaboggin, there we are, good old vintage Cuban necktie. <coughs> Brought to you by Derpenschley, and remember, if it doesn't say Derpen, it's not Derpenschley. Well, that was a word from our sponsor here. Uh, Darwin Schley is the one who actually pays for all of our lodging and hotel rooms and igloos that they make us stay in every time we record this god-awful show here in Gumption, Utah. I can't imagine so, how much it costs them to how, keep these igloos frozen out here just to make us stay in them. How many peanut shells they must pay the Eskimos that live here in Gumption? So we've got, oh, uh, we probably got time for one more tune. And um, at least to plug where we would find your music. Um, so savanitymusic.bandcamp.com. Okay. Yeah. So do you have any CDs or merchandise or anything like that? Uh, I've got some split tapes. That I oh, did. you got cassettes? Yeah. Oh, that's awesome. I got a couple of Dude, them. I got to get one of those from you. I Absolutely. actually still collect cassette tapes. Th- thank, yeah, Hell thankfully. Yeah. I, I don't yeah, meet yeah. too many people that even can play cassettes anymore, so it's well, nice to... I'd, actually, you'd be surprised at how many people come through here that that's what they got is a cassette tape. Good. And that's why I think it's awesome, and of course, that's why I have quite the collection of even, them. Awesome. <laughs> I still have a functioning so, eight-track player. Uh, nice. <laughs> Hell yeah. So before we go, Savenity, the best way to get a hold of you again is Bandcamp. Yep, SavenityMusic.BandCamp.com. And if you want a cassette tape, um, just, just me- gonna- message me on there or like SavenityMusic at Gmail dot com. All right, hell yeah! I hope you all have enjoyed what you've been hearing as much as I have. And what's the name of this last tune? In your corner. In my corner. Not in his corner, dude. I don't know if you want to be in my corner. I ate a bunch of beans. Uh, I have soil. Don't buy the discarded soiled only draws. <laughs> All right. In my corner by Savinity KW Judas. We really appreciate everyone listening. And have a pleasant tomorrow.
We'd like to thank you for joining us on another exclusive and exciting episode of J.W. Judith on Free Radio Provo. We now return you to our regularly scheduled free radio programming. Awesome. Yeah, awesome, awesome, awesome.